Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Next week, members of the RMA, or Rural Municipalities of Alberta, will be gathering in Edmonton for their annual fall convention. This year brings a significant change, as Pinoca County Reeve Paul McLaughlin, after years of dedicated service, steps down as president. Now, there are five candidates running, and we've already released four of the candidates running for the RMA presidency. Today, we are joined by the last candidate, Gene Herbeck, from Beaver County. To discuss his aspirations to lead the rural municipalities of Alberta and his vision working collaboratively with the province of Alberta and all members. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Gene, thank you so much for just sitting down with me and talking about your bid to become the president of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta at next week's upcoming RMA uh, AGM in Edmonton. So I've got to start with a simple but an overarching question. What made you decide to put your name in the ring for the next presidency of RMA? Well, uh, Thanks for having me first off. And yeah, I think my main reason is, is I think uh, we're opportunity for some change. Uh, I think it's a critical time and especially we're on year three. It's going to be an election next year and, you know, I guess less than a year now. Um, And there's lots to be done. Uh, Our, on the RMA advocacy side, we've done a really good job. I believe that uh, the staffing there have, have done excellent and and the board um but we're not getting a whole lot of wins and uh i think my my big push is is that uh let's try to build on some of these smaller wins to see if we can get some bigger ones so So what are uh, what are some of those small wins that you're talking about that you're hoping to become big wins well i think you know obviously uh agriculture to me seems like it's kind of fallen off the the board there and they, they, that's one of the things maybe we'll talk a little bit more but you know even even on some of the uh, bills that we've uh, we've done a really good job dissecting them and we have got you know some changes and i think in order to move the things ahead a little bit better i think we need to work with the government to try to focus on those wins and uh, and build them up right i think we're kind of at a stagnant part in our our relationships with them uh, and I think that there's room that we can grow those. So how do you see yourself with your background as uh, Deputy Reeve of Beaver County being able to work with the provincial government, but also your all the members of RMA from Northern Sunrise to Tabor, from Crow's Nest Pass, all the way up to Two Hills? How do you see yourself being able to work collaboratively with everyone and ensure you do get those big wins? Well, I think... Uh... It maybe just kind of goes back to my background. I'm I've been a municipal employee uh, with the Edmonton Police Service for over 36 years, and uh, I deal with difficult people. That's kind of part of my job. And uh, I think with that background and and just having an open mind to kind of hear people out, uh, see you know where the commonalities are and and move those things ahead, right? And uh, sometimes you got to know when to listen. Other times you got to know when to, uh, to you know, maybe to, to speak up and, and, and be there. And I think over the last, well, I, this is my third term as council. Uh, I've been to a bunch of the ag service tours and stuff across the province. Uh, I've got to learn a lot more about the province. Uh, you know, I, I will, you know, I, obviously I, I like talking about the ag, ag side of it is that uh, it is so different. 
but yet the people that are in it are so much the same. You know, farming practices in uh, Tabor versus farming practices in Grand Prairie uh, are so different. Uh, you know, obviously with weather, all the other things. So I think just getting a, getting those groups of people to kind of get something in common uh, and work from that. And I think with the government, I think it's just a, a matter of, of them. Sometimes they don't even understand the differences, uh, you know, between one region to the next. So let's break down some of the issues that rural municipalities are dealing with in today's uh, sort of uh, political climate. And uh, we'll start with the topic that you've been talking about a little bit already, and that is agriculture. Rural municipalities deal a lot with farmers, ranchers, uh, cattle herders across this province. How can rural municipalities and the RMA help the agriculture sector be as uh, profitable as they can be with so many external factors, uh, whether it be the federal government, world uh, issues going on? How can RMA and rural municipalities help our agricultural industry? Well, I think if you see over the last few years, uh, agriculture hasn't been really the the key uh, focus. You know, we've, we've talk a lot about oil and gas we talk about uh you know even infrastructure that's then that's something we can we can touch a little bit later as well is uh agriculture is something essentially those guys pay the taxes yeah um that's not our our concern our concern is, is and it's like in any municipality you want to help the businesses that are there that are thriving and having them grow even more and uh, I believe that that's something that uh, the RMA can assist with, uh, I think. And by supporting those, maybe it won't, we won't be as reliant on uh, on those taxes uh, from oil and gas. And I think that's kind of, you know, we talk a little bit about uh, the peace area in regards to processing and, and uh, cattle markets and stuff like that. You go up to Grand Prairie and you go any anywhere north there, there's a lot of cattle up there. Um, and they they struggle in, in the fact is that they have to bring a lot of those cattle down to the you know to the central area to to even sell because uh, there is no processing. So those are kind of things that I think that uh, we can look at to improve on. And uh, I know that everybody, you know the you know the, the four other people that are running, uh, I think primarily everybody talks about oil and gas. Uh, I want to kind of be a little bit more broad in what my I'm bringing to the table is that uh, we've got to think about these other sectors as well. So the, so the agriculture sector took a big hit over the last few years, uh, particularly in southeastern Alberta. The drought conditions caused a lot of farmers to deal with uh, grain uh, lack of crops growing and their cattle being having to be shipped or even sold because of the drought conditions. What specific issues? Uh, initiative or a program are you looking at to help this cattle producers and even the crop growers go through this sort of unprecedented time that they're dealing with because i was speaking to a reeve up in northern alberta the drought conditions that we saw last year in southeastern alberta they're getting that up in northeast northwest uh, part of the province right now as well so it's not just a southern issue so how can rma work with the ag industry to offset some of these losses that they might be feeling well i think you know the biggest gamblers in the world right now are farmers uh, yeah you know what if you if you want uncertainty you know what this year uh in our area we we struggled with a wet spring then we struggled with a hot dry summer and then we struggled with kind of a weird fall you know like canolas just didn't cure and and things like that so i guess <laughs> that's the first thing is we don't know what what happens with the weather and uh, i had the opportunity to be down in lethbridge in, in january and and my daughter had went to a uh, school down there before and in in two years i was just shocked at how much things have grown and uh, i think that you know part of the thing that uh, that really needs to maybe happen in an rma and, and even the province can maybe learn from this is we need to educate uh, all of our farmers uh, about, you know, the. Uh, I guess one of the big things would be uh, irrigation. Uh, yeah. I know there's a lot of money that over the last two terms 
uh, that the province is ir irrigated or, or earmarked for irrigation. And I have farmers in my area and, and I'm sure anybody north, they're like, you know, that's a lot of money. What are we getting out of it? And uh, I uh, sit as the uh, uh, alternate on the provincial ag service board. And I was able to meet, uh, well, there's a couple of people from down south. And it was a real eye opener for me. And I thought I knew lots, but I didn't know nothing compared to, to what, uh, you know, what they had to tell. And, you know, a lot of those people, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have a crop if there was no irrigation. You know, like, you know, they talk about uh, non-irrigated land that sometimes, well, they don't get no crop or, or a good crop is 15 or 20 bushels. Well, if you get 15 or 20 bushels where we're at, you know, there's guys that aren't going to survive. Mm -hmm. So I think educating and, and getting that. And I think if the province can do a little bit better job of uh, ensuring that some of those funds that are going to be earmarked for, for other projects is on the ag innovation side and and i think that's that's maybe the key to maybe moving things forward uh on ag uh because i, I you know and i've i've been up to grand prairie i uh, will use that one because that's kind of the central part of it uh processing up there i think would be huge uh it would save the farmers there a lot of money and it's a lot easier shipping a carcass than it is live yeah. And I, I do I do think that that's there's opportunities all across the province for these types of things. And with 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 climate change and stuff, we are seeing that farming is creeping further north. And, you know, some of the crops that are, are better are, are in some of those lands that were predominantly just only forest or pasture. How how is your relationship with Agriculture Minister R. J. Sergitson? I always pronounce his last name incorrectly, but uh, have you met with him and have you had this conversation? Because uh, back in September, you and I had chatted briefly uh, via email, and you were just getting ready to do your crops and heading out and doing some uh, farming yourself. So, uh, as a farmer, as a person who represents a, a big area in uh, sort of northeastern or central east uh, Alberta. How's your relationship with the agriculture minister? Can you have these frank discussions that you need to have on the agriculture file? Uh, I, I I believe so. I think uh, RJ is a good. <laughs> I think uh, I'll give a great example of a win. Uh, last year at this time, we uh, we met with RJ uh, at the ledge. I hope he doesn't mind me calling him RJ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should I should say minister as well. I do apologize, <laughs> minister. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and we, we put our case because the federal government had uh, a drought assistance program that they, they, they mapped out for us. And I'm going to be very specific because they, they did map it out. And uh, so I don't know of any weather pattern that follows the county map uh, of who gets the uh, drought assistance and who doesn't. Uh, and I, I believe RJ and his team, they, they fought hard. And uh, we did win, you know, they did, they did come back. And, and, you know, there's some areas, our, pro, or our uh, county is long, skinny and long. And uh, we can have three different types of, of uh, issues, you know, from one end, it's flooding to the other end, it's, it's, uh, you know, dry. So I think it was good that, that uh, they were actually able to educate the uh, federal minister. And I, I think, you know, of some of the positives, that's what I would call a win. And uh, I believe working with with the ag minister is there are some other wins that we've got, you know, like the uh, Alberta environment, uh, Alberta agriculture. They want, they've been working hard on a drought mitigation plan. Uh, that was another win that kind of come out there. And I think maybe those are some of the things that we get lost of. And I, I know it's very easy to always say like. It's all about money and, and uh, we, we want our way. But I think I'm maybe a person that's more of the glass is half full than it is half empty. And uh, so like, those are things I would consider, uh, you know, a real positive thing. And, and I just talked to him on Monday and, you know, it was it was a very good conversation back and forth. And and I think that's uh, that's something that hopefully I could bring to the table. 
we talk about the infrastructure. When I talk to Reeves counselors from rural municipalities across Alberta, the one thing I hear over and over again are our rural municipalities, counties, municipal districts are struggling when it comes to financing infrastructure projects, whether it be bridge repairs, whether it be road repairs, whether it be water systems to safely deliver safe water to the residents of your community if you're not on a well where do you think this government should go in addressing these issues if you are elected as the RMA president in uh, November? Well, interesting you should bring it up. I, I just I'm going to tell you a little bit about my campaign and my campaign is is called uh, uh, it's building bridges and, and mending fences. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the agriculture side, about working with the government uh, and it, building bridges is all about infrastructure. And uh, in our area, uh, we have lots of bridges that were built, you know, pre-70s, and they're at life's end. And uh, years ago, the province had full jurisdiction on, on all the bridges. And uh, they were, you know, I, th I think they saw the writing on the wall, and they were gracious enough to give all the municipalities uh, that as part of their infrastructure. Um, it's expensive. And, uh, I, you know, I think uh, that's something that we need to work with. And the worst thing is, is you, when you're talking just about bridges, it's not just one ministry anymore. You, you've got environment, you've got uh, municipal affairs, uh, you've got transportation. And then you throw into the fact is, is that years ago that some of the structures that were built, uh, there was code issues. And, you know, we have a couple of, of bridges that we, we apply for funding every year. Uh, recently we, we did get some funding and our, our MLA and, and, and the minister of municipal affairs, you know, said, Hey, you know, we've seen that you haven't got any, any, any funding. So we, we did get some, but the problem is we have lots of bridges and yeah. currently we, we have two that we're replacing. We couldn't wait for the funding. And, uh, one of the things that I, I would, I would definitely lobby for is that if we have to do something because it's structurally unsafe. Uh, it puts the municipality in a in a bad spot because people need those bridges to cross. Farmers need them. Uh, people need to attend business or or pleasure, uh, and you want want them to get safe. So you know we we are replacing two bridges currently. Actually, this week that we're, but it's a long process because cement they have to go out, they engineer it, they they do the infrastructure. Uh, you know even even just looking at what else they need to do on it. Yeah. Then they build it. Then you got to wait for stuff to cure. It's a long process. And uh, I think there's some things that I think that could be very simple fixes, like getting just getting engineering passed so that, you know, you only get stuff engineered on, on one type of bridge and it's, it's good enough. Uh and though I think that's a longer term type process, but I think that should be on the table. And I think that, you know, the RMA is definitely can bring those types of things forward uh, to, to maybe get some of that stuff. So the costs kind of come down. Um, because I, just to interject, because when I when I was I spoke to Murray Carrick uh, at Reeve of the MD of Lesser Slave River a few months ago, uh, not for my show, we we just sort of happened to run into each other and we were talking about one of his bridges and it was going to cost the, the MD Lesser Slave River in the ballpark of about $3 million to fix a bridge that supplies one of the hamlets within the communities. Should the province upload these types of infrastructure projects where this is not a municipal issue? It is a kind of a provincial issue because people rely on our roadways. And while the municipalities should technically be looking after the roads, the province has a responsibility to also look after them as well. Should they not? Yeah. And I, I think that's kind of where we need to, to get some common ground and, and yeah. get some, 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 uh, a game plan in place uh, like the bridge in our area we have to replace it and now we we will never get the stip funding for it yeah. because we've done the work without without their you know quote unquote um, approval so i i think if we could work something out where you we have something in place that it's a 50 50 no matter what and that safety is the reason that you're replacing the bridge not not because you got the funding because if you're always waiting for the funding you know what and municipalities 
we can try to make things work because we have to, uh, you know, when it comes to, to something, when it comes to safety, I, I don't think that that should be a question anymore. I think it should, that should, the criteria should be safety is number one and you find the fun and whether you, whether the government and, and us as municipalities, if it's 50, 50 or, or one third, two thirds, I think that that, that needs to be the process in place so that municipalities can plan better. And, you know, we're under the gun. We have five-year and 10-year road plans. That can be shot in like 15 minutes when an overload truck goes over a bridge and breaks, breaks, breaks through, right? And all of a sudden now you've got that $3 million that you're hoping to save up for the last, for the next five years. You got to do it tomorrow. I want to turn to the last sort of uh, issue before I start talking to you about what's, what your vision for RMA is going to be. But one concern that I hear from Reeves across the province is rural health care. It has been a big issue for a lot of rural municipalities. And I say that because we're seeing closures of emergency rooms, and that means residents of your RMs are going or rural municipalities are going to bigger urban centers, which could be life and death. And I say that respectfully, knowing that people are struggling, but I was talking to someone in Big Lakes County, actually, the former Deputy Reeve, and he said that from Big Lakes County, where he lives, they have to go to Peace River or Grand Prairie, and that's a two-hour drive. That's not reasonable, in my opinion, but that's the way that it is right now. What should RMA be doing to lobby the government to address the issues that rural healthcare clinics are dealing with today? Okay, and I, I guess... Uh... Our, well, my background, uh, I sit as a uh, chair of our uh, uh, seniors housing and uh, healthcare is always one of the biggest issues. Uh, but we've had some wins, I think, on, on the whole rural healthcare part of it is that uh, our county, Beaver County, brought forward a, a resolution in regards to nurse practitioners. Uh, the previous premier uh, before uh, Ms. Smith uh, flatly said it, ain't, it wasn't going to happen. And, uh, you know, it, they're rolling in that out now. And I think that's a tool for us in rural. Is it, it may be a quicker fix right now in that uh, getting doctors for rural is yeah. tough. Uh, but I think it's a win. And I think it kind of opens up the door for out of the outside of the box thinking. Uh, so that, that you know, that doesn't kind of answer your question, but it kind of takes us to the next step is uh, we do see some uh, educational sides that are, are, are getting. And I think rural doctors and, and stuff uh, on funding for, for going to school, that's that's come to fruition. And I think that's uh, for John Sony. I think that's her, uh, uh, you know, that's kind of her her way of of, uh, of bringing that to. And, you know, and like we have... I I, I know I know a counselor from the uh, Clearwater County is screaming right now that you're talking about this because this is a very big passion of uh, Jenny Malhoff of Clearwater County. So <laughs> just continue on. I apologize. And, and I know Jenny because I've heard her speak. Uh, and, and and you know what? That's good. The passion in there. And but there's other things that we can do that I think are like we have uh, we have first responders. Uh, one of the other things that I, I, you know, really push for is that, uh, if, if funding for training for our, uh, healthcare workers, uh, even to bring even to bring other healthcare care workers up to the next, next level of, of service, uh, is good. But I think those are, those are wins for everybody in the province because you can, you can, you can give out that money for training for your firefighters and your ambulance, uh, you know, so we can have a higher level of service that way. Uh, is it is it the full answer? No, but it it gives us a little bit of peace in mind. And and you know, they, there has been some transformations in in regards to uh, uh, ambulance service. And I think the RMA did a really good job. Uh, and that that's that's from the from the member level to the uh, executive level. Uh, to kind of push for those changes because and they, they were simple changes yeah. uh, that 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 worked and I I, I know I kind of I kind of keep going back and I'm not I'm not I'm not 
promoting that the government is doing everything right. But oh, we're going to talk but, about that in two seconds here. <laughs> <laughs> I, where I'm going with this is that there are there's some good things, you know, that are happening and, and you know, nursing, uh, you know, smaller hospitals that are able to provide uh, training and nursing. You know, Wainwright has that. And, and you know, yeah. we we've really been pushing in our area. Uh, and and I, I I keep saying about local stuff because this is stuff that I can control right now and and, and maybe at a at a higher level I'll be able to help other municipalities do this is we've been working with our municipalities in the area to, to get uh, Augustina back in to have a nursing program and uh, you know it's those are the types of things and I think those smaller investments give you bigger return than just throwing money at everything we know that the healthcare system we could throw all the money at it at it that we want. It ain't just gonna fix it, you know. We need to get, we need to get a different mindset in there. Now, we we've just talked about three very big macro issues that rural municipalities are dealing with today: healthcare, agriculture, and infrastructure. But I would harbor a guess that you have talked to many Reeves, many councillors in your time on uh, as a councillor, but also through RMA. And every municipality has their unique micro issue, the unique issues that are dedicated just to them. What role do you see yourself playing as potentially the next RMA president in addressing the macro issues, but not forgetting the micro issues? Because every municipality feels like they want their issues heard from a provincial government. And as president, you will be there to address not just the macro ones, but the micro ones as well. Yeah, you know, I think the process that we're doing, that RMA is, I've been involved with the resolutions uh, committee for the, well, I guess for seven years now. And I think the process that the RMA has developed kind of kind of deals with those micros, right? Because even, even the small level uh, issues, everybody has the opportunity to bring a resolution forward to go to the government. Yeah. But it goes through the district. Uh, it has to be endorsed and not just, you know, ju- not just endorsed by 50% plus one. It has to be endorsed, you know, three fifths majority, which then brings it to a higher level so that the RMA board knows that it's a bigger issue. Uh, and then it, you know, once it gets past there, it's, it, you know, then the province knows that it's, it's, it's got the backing. And I, I think even educating uh, everybody, all the, all the members, uh, is that sometimes your issue that you don't think, but doesn't bother you there. And, you know, I, I guess Richards and ground squirrels is one, some municipalities, they don't have them. So it's never been an issue. Okay. Uh, but in some areas it's devastating to, to cropland. And I think that's something that, that RMA is doing good in regards to educating those. And I think that's something that we can build on to do better uh, so that those micro you know, they don't, everything doesn't have to be macro. It, some of those micro ones are the ones, as long as people are being heard. And, and I go back to my background and that you got to listen to people out no matter what. Uh, and if you can get some help that way, I think that's, that's probably, you know, that's a win again, right? That's, you know, we're talking about winning and losing. And I think those, those little small wins are like that. And I, I, I believe as the district, uh, you know, we have our five district, uh, directors and they all bring that to the table and I guess when you have your board meetings and stuff those micros are going to still come to the board level right as the potential next president you will have to be sitting down with uh, Premier Daniel Smith Minister McIver Municipal Affairs Minister Gene Energy Minister Sergerson Agriculture and while you will want to have a collaborative approach with them Sometimes you will have to push back if they do something that municipalities do not want. Are you able to call out a spade being a spade if they if it's if the province puts forward something that is not in the best interests of your membership of RMA? Oh, I think that's a great question. Is I think I think uh, if you have that respect, and I, I'll talk a little bit about you know gaining respect with each and every one of those. I think if you have that respect and uh, I think they expect to be called out on it. Uh, it's no different than, you know, we talk about some of their bills that they've brought forward and, you know, some of them are just downright, we just don't like them. But 
it's no different than us as a municipality when we bring a bylaw forward. You know, in theory, we hear it all, right? Uh, so we bring it forward. We bring it forward for the public and, and everybody else to look at. We have our first reading. We come back. We listen to what people have to say. And then we go forward and sometimes we'll fix things. And sometimes we're going to stick with them because it just makes sense for, for the municipality. And I, and I'm, and I think that's kind of how the province works with theirs. And there's some things that they're just not going to back down on. And I think if you have that respect, I think you can call those guys out and gals. Um, and I think it's, I think it's one of those things that you just need to, pick up the phone and say, you know, uh, minister, I, I you're going to get blasted on this and this is why. Um, but that's how, that's how, you know, well, it's even, that's how your own relationships work is you just got to be upfront with them. Right. And I, I think demanding respect and versus earning respect, I think that's key. And I, I really think with this government, I think it's probably more key than anything is that uh, they're in a position that, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I've, I've worked in, in my terms. I've been with, I think four or five different premiers. Well, yeah, actually probably more than that. Um, uh, you know, bill one, uh, the, in regards to farm safety back when it was brought up, uh, I guess it's probably seven years ago. It was terrible as a farmer. It was, it was going to crush the agriculture. Thing. It was one of these things that was, was terrible. But, you know, in hindsight, there were some good things that transpired out of that. Uh, I know as a, as, as, as a farmer, and I know, I know other farmers or, or commercial farmers or industrial farms, it opened their eyes up that there is some, rely, or there's some responsibility for them to actually uh, have insurance, uh, to think about WCB. Uh, I'm glad that that bill never made it to, to pass. But at the same token, too, I think we as a as as a, you know the agriculture industry, I think it opened our eyes up to say, you know, we could do st some stuff better. And you know, I know guys now that have WCB for just you know for their harvest crew, and it's pennies on the dollar, really. But or insurance, and you know what, I think everybody wants to see their whoever's working for them, they want to see them go home and they want to see them go home safe. That's never been a question. And I think, so those are the types of things that maybe, you know, some of these bills and stuff, they, yeah. And you can't call them out. I, I think that they expect to be called out on stuff because I don't know necessarily know that they always agree with them because it's, it's a big picture. There's, there's, there's a reason why they're bringing them forward. Speaking of calling people out, Paul McLaughlin is the man that you're trying to succeed as the next RMA president. How would a Harbeck presidency be different than a McLaughlin presidency? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't think I can be a, as good a speaker as Paul. <laughs> I think I'm getting anybody, that sense from all five of the candidates. Who have I, I, think, I think that's, uh, you know what, and, and uh you know, I, I think I have the gift to gab too, but I, I don't, I don't, you know, Paul is second to none. I think when it comes to, to that part of the show, I think that's, that's good. Uh, I think my, one of the positives for me is I, I like I, I've kind of said before, is I like hearing things out. Um, you know, and I, I think my communication skills are, are good. Uh, and I think that'll, that'll be the difference. And I think building the relationships, Paul is, Paul has got his marching orders in regards to, you know, calling those things out. And I, and I do think that they, they are successful. Uh, but at the same token too, I'm kind of like, Hey, let's discuss this. Let's start at the, start at the beginning. Right. Uh, and, and maybe, maybe some of that, some of the things that happened, maybe that, you know, how people dig their heels in. Right. And, uh, you know, RMA, our, uh, advocacy team uh you know with with you know from tasha down like i don't think you'll get a more skilled set of people to to tear tear things apart uh and you know that's their job they do an awesome job with that they come up with some solutions and i think our job uh and not not just me is if i'm successful as a president but the board needs to 
to really kind of get on board of, of communicating what those issues are and how to come. I think uh, you'll see that, you know, part of my, my way of dealing with it is coming with solution based uh, responses. Um, so just on that note, I'm going to interject there for a second, because you bring up a topic that I want to touch on a bit before we start wrapping up, because I am cautious of time for you. Um, advocacy is not the only part of the RMA's presidency's role. You will be working with the RMA staff, and they are an abundant staff. You have this brand new building, and you are doing great work. Your pro, your the canoe procurement program is growing at an extent uh, at a fantastic rate. What do you see the RMA's? Actually, I'm going to rephrase this. I'm going to rephrase the second part of this. How? What's your vision for RMA as a whole, if elected president, and not just from the advocacy, but also from their procurement, from their members-driven uh, workshops? What do you see the role of RMA growing into if you are elected? Well, I think from my point of view, I think it's fantastic, like to see what they've done and how they've grown and the staff. But I, I guess I'm a little cautious, uh, and I, I think. You know, not knowing the nuts and bolts, and I know that we're, you know, I've 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 seen, you know, the, the amazing things we have. We have companies all across Canada. We have other other province and municipalities that are all signing up because it is a great program. But I always I always leery about growing too quick, and I think one of the things that, that I would like to see, and 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 I'm sure that all our members would like to see, is a little more detailed in regards to to judging where our risk is, and risk versus reward. Because there's there's a time when you get to be too big where your your rewards uh, that margin shrinks lots yeah. because and I think that's something and I, I don't uh, I know that this over this next year uh, obviously there's there's going to be some you know significant change uh, if, you know obviously at the top for one uh, but I, I think that. I would like to see where the, you know, we maybe somebody independently comes in to, to see what that risk and reward is. Um, because I think as a goal, you want to keep growing, but sometimes you want to be a little more cautious of how fast you grow or where you grow into, because you may end up growing into an area where, you know, there's a lot more risk and uh, just got to be cautious with that. And I, I think I'll tell you one of my, one of my things I would love to see is that our, on our benefit side, I would like to see that grow more in regards to our, our municipalities and districts in, in, in the province. I, I'd like to see that grow so that every one of our municipalities is under uh, the RMA uh, wing. And, you know, currently right now, it, that's not how it is. It's, I, I don't know the percentage, but I know even our own, uh, our own County is not, uh, isn't signed up on another benefit program. And I think that's something that's something that we as as you know we're the owners, I think that I would I would love to see that you know we have like a 99% rate of uh, of use on our own benefits. Uh, but that's you know and that's something without you know having the day-to-day -day operation. But for me if, me from the outside looking in uh, and I think I have a good good understanding of what's going on there because I've been you know, the district uh, chair in, in five for, you know, seven years now, well, it'll become, I guess six years, it'll be coming up to seven years uh, once it's completed here. So uh, I think that's, that would be one of my goals is, is just on the business side is, is, is to, to look at that. And uh, I do think that any business and even municipalities, we did a governance review on, uh, on our own County. And I think that, I think all of, all of them, including the, the RMA should, should probably have those types of, of reviews independent. Uh, it's, it's board uh, orchestrated versus, uh, you know, admin orchestrated, because I think you get a little bit better understanding to ensure that everything is done right. <laughs> I would agree with that. Um, the role of our the RMA president is not a part-time job the, you will be in Edmonton, you will be flying to Ottawa because you'll be part of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. You will be working a lot through the advocacy work, working with the RMA staff. 
you are a locally elected uh, counselor. You're a deputy reeve. Uh, you're a farmer. Do you have enough time to do all this work on top of doing RMA president? Because <laughs> I'm assuming someone, uh, the members are looking for someone who can give their full attention to the organization because, like you said, you're going through a challenging time. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And it, it is something that's been thought about at a longer period of time because uh, at the last election, I thought, you know, really it'd be an interesting thing to get into. Yeah. And so I've been doing my research going back two years now. Uh, I was at a time of my life where my kids were still in school. I still I have one that's just finishing up university this year. So I don't... Uh, don't have uh, that's not an issue because I, I I do I am a family guy and and I think that that was important uh, and you know I dragged my kids around uh, to many uh, uh, events uh, you know we're, we're still active in the community and volunteering and stuff and but you know they attended you know some of the R R M E things some of the ag service stuff with me over the years and stuff I think it's important to include them that part is. You know, now that my kids are done school and they're finishing up uh, school, that's that's opened up some time. And over the last year, I've really kind of my wife and I sat down. We were, you know, dwindling down from some of our agriculture side uh, just to make sure that I had to make this decision. And I made this decision back uh, probably in the summertime is when it kind of came through when I got rid of you know a bunch of my cows. Uh, that it is a full time, it's 200 plus days a year. And uh, so I think I'm at that stage of my life where it's, I'm, I have the time, I can make the time. And I am a bit of a workaholic. So uh, that's, uh, I think you have to be to, to even entertain this, this uh, position. So, uh, you know, we were just, I was just looking at some emails today, you know, if you're successful, this is what you're going to be doing the first week after the convention. So uh, uh, I think I've got that done and I'm, I'm prepared for that. Uh, as, it, as far as it goes with the, the, the biggest support I needed was from my wife. Uh, you know, Carrie means the world to me. And, and, you know, we've sat down and we talked about this and, you know, it's a, it's a change. It's uh, you know, it's, it's going to be where, you know, I'll be gone a lot more. But you know we have we have good uh, good neighbors. We got good family and and stuff. So that that part on the on the farm side, I think that's you know you can always rent stuff out too, right? So that's true. As um, far as as far as ahead. the FCM side, and, and I'm kind of a nationalist, and I my council, a few of my council members, they're not they they're not big fans of the FCM, <laughs> and. I go back to the, the, I think I talked a little bit about education and stuff. And, uh, you know, a number of years ago, we were in Quebec City uh, for the FCM and, and uh, I volunteered to hand out, uh, you know, Canadian energy t-shirts. And uh, it was uh, it's pretty interesting. I'll tell you that uh, there were, there was lots of people that were happy and, you know, we did a good job. I think, uh, we uh, we gave out T-shirts in English and in French. Uh, still have a couple of those, and uh, I think I'm kind of a nationalist. And the fact is, is that uh, my dad uh, served in in the Canadian Army. He was an airplane uh, mechanic uh, during World War II. Uh, I have an uncle that uh, passed away from injuries that he he received uh, overseas as well. And I just I always ground myself and think, you know how would they feel if our, our country fell apart? Because they gave their lives for our country. Uh, I believe in, you know, I'm still active with our, our legion. I, I go on March. I don't march very well, but uh, I believe that that's something that we, we need to, you know, to protect. Uh, kind of breaks my heart to see some of the fighting that goes on in the Canadian, uh, you know, parliament is it's, it, it's it's got too uh, too televised, I think, in my mind. But I think that we as a country, if if and and I think agriculture is the one thing that's going to bring us together across the country. Is it doesn't matter if you're a fisherman or if you uh, you're a farmer in Ontario or Quebec. We all have the same problems. Uh, it's just how we 
work with them. And uh, so I think the FCM, I, I do believe that uh, it probably lost some of its, its uh, vim and its vigor over the years when they, they were a little bit too political. You know, uh, they, they spoke out against the government in power and stuff. And, and I, you know, people do hold grudges. And, and I get why some of those people aren't happy with FCM. You know, in, in Calgary, we hosted uh, the Alberta Room through the RMA. And, and uh, you know, the first, the, the good thing was, is the first year that it was done, it was, you know, a few municipalities, they threw in 2500 or 5000 or $10,000 and they hosted uh, a room. It really took off. And so when we hosted in Calgary, uh, you know, I was I was happy. The board asked me and uh, to come and, and and promote it as well. It was fantastic. I think it was probably the highlight of the FCM for some people to to come out there. The entertainment was good. The food was good. The people there they they flocked to be inside, and I think that's something that we can grow. Uh, and and that's why I, I do believe that you know the FCM does have a real place at the table. Uh, so I'm looking plus, forward to, I'm looking forward to the Alberta room in Ottawa if you guys are doing it next year in Ottawa. So hopefully when I'm there and you're there, we can grab a drink. Yeah, well, I don't drink, but uh yeah. Oh, I know. don't either, but we can grab a coffee. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have some good non-alcoholic beers now. And- there you go. Um so my final question for you, and it's the million, it's the all important one. We've talked about you. We've talked about your role. We talked about what you'd bring to this organization. But why should members put their trust in Gene to become the next president of RMA? Well, I think uh, the people that know me, uh, you know, I, I think they know, you know, uh, how I treat people. I think that's uh, that's probably number one. Um, I think I am a little bit different in, in regards to, uh, you know, what everybody else is. I, I'm, I am more about some of the smaller things within uh, the army. And, and, you know, and when I talk about small things, like agriculture has fallen off the, the table in my books. I think that we need to maybe not be as aggressive uh, in dealing with things. And I think that's where, where maybe I, I I think it's going to be up to the membership to say, do we want to be going head on or do we want to, to sit down and, and work things out? And I think my, what I'm offering is, you know, building bridges and mending fences. I think that's what it's, that's what my whole whole life is. And that's, that's who I will be as the president is, is do you want somebody that's going to sit down and, and have that coffee with uh, minister McIver and, and, and talk about how we can fix things. And uh, I think, you know that's that's maybe the approach that uh, that we need. Uh, I hope that's what the membership thinks that they need, uh, and uh, I'll do a good job at that. If they want someone, uh, you know, to be in the media every day and and uh, you know going toe to toe, I'm not your guy. Uh, I think uh, I'm more of the guy to sit down and and you know go back to that solution based results and. Uh, you know what, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, but I think if we can build on those smaller wins, we will get some bigger wins. And, uh, you know, that's human nature is, is, uh, you can come to some kind of common, common ground. I think that's the best way of dealing with stuff. Certainly is Gene. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sitting down and doing this. Um, members of RMA will be voting next week. We will be there and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person and continuing this conversation. And hopefully we'll have a conversation after the election and have you back on the show if you are the successful candidate. So thank you so much. Yeah, I know. Thanks for having us. And I, I think you're, uh, I just love your show. I think it's, it's good. It's so good that we have somebody that gets to, the rural voice out there and uh that's good for us thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of municipal affairs if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button because you will not want to miss our november 6th event where we will be broadcasting from the rma convention to cover this important election the rma presidency election and we will have live results from the rma convention so until then stay engaged stay connected and we'll see you next time 